<laughs> you know I would be in yoga pants right now if I could be. Okay, so some of you are guests today, you have no idea what this is about. Some of you are kind of newer and you're hoping that it's what you think it is. And some of you are vets and you totally get it. But this business is about relationships. And I'm not gonna tear up, Melissa. <laughs> I hear you. Um, my relationship with this young lady started eight years ago. And we sat across from a Starbucks. Oh, the other guys coming. Um, <laughs> we sat across from a Starbucks table, and she might have felt tired, she might have felt overwhelmed, and maybe a little bit embarrassed. And she's going to share her story with you that's going to move you like you haven't. Well, Jamie just blew you away. So <laughs> she's going to move you as well. But the one thing that she didn't show was to eat. It's not in her nature. This girl is a fighter. She has absolutely no idea how pivotal, pivotal, pivotal she has been in my own success because we have grown up together in this business. And it's my honor to introduce, <laughs> my honor <laughs> to introduce my nine star leader, my partner, and one of my very best friends, Amanda Dewey. Off at school, I pick them up, <laughs> or so does the bus. And 
while some people love having a corporate job, I'm a little bit of a rule breaker. That's one thing you should know about me. I actually thought about asking Darren if he could put me on a five second delay. Because if you have children in the room and you don't want to hear them cursing, this is your one and only warning. <laughs> I have no promises about this mouth today. So the point is, where I was is clearly not where I am today. And what all of you new coaches in here are wondering is what happened in between? How did that happen? What happened over the last eight years to take you from bankrupt to a thriving business where you're happy, you're fulfilling your passions, and I actually feel like I have a purpose. So how did we get there? On a call about two weeks ago, I have a mastermind group, not my mastermind group, I'm a part of a mastermind group that's led by Doug Moss at Corporate. It's with other nine to 15 stars in the West and Central regions. And he shared with us that in his many years of experience leading top leaders in a network marketing business, that when he looks at top coaches, regardless of their age, their gender, their background, where they came from, any other circumstances, that he was able to pinpoint seven different qualities that all of these top coaches had, regardless of anything else. And when he shared those with me, I went, thank you, Doug, you just wrote my speech. <laughs> now I know what I'm gonna say. Because I could totally relate and agree with every single one of those. And that's what I wanna share with you guys today. Because really having those seven qualities is that in between. That's how we got from where we were to where I am today. So if you're taking notes, write this down. If you're not, you should be. If you're doing it on your phone, I will assume you are just tweeting all the wonderful things that I say. Just make sure you tag me. So number one, it all top coaches are genuine. You got to see Jamie stand here on stage and I think she very well pinpointed what being genuine means. It means showing up as your true self wherever you're at every single day. You know who your upline sponsor is? Would you say they're genuine? I know that being here today, if I did not give you a swear word warning, and I never, I'll be really surprised if I make it through this without dropping something. My team would be like, who is this? And you know, this is not our coach. Because they know about me, that me being genuine means I'm brutally honest. You don't ask me a question unless you want the real answer, okay? Uh, that it comes from a place of love. I will never say it just to be mean. I'm saying it because I want you to succeed and I'm not gonna give you a line of BS just to make you feel better about it. And they also know that I'm loyal to a fault. <laughs> so while I may give you a very healthy dose of tough love, it is love nonetheless, and I'll be the first one to fight for you if someone comes after you, right? That's me, that's what my tribe is, that's who I've attracted. Doesn't mean it's right or that it's wrong, or that you have to be like me to be a top coach. It means that you need to not be afraid of being that person that you are. Does that make sense? I have to be not afraid to speak my really brutal, honest opinions about things, because that is who I really am, and if I tried to hide it, people would see right through it. This face doesn't lie. <laughs> I might bite my tongue, but you know what I'm thinking because of my face. Just ask my team, they know this. <laughs> Melissa sat down with me too many times. I pulled up the bed and said, <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, okay, I'll do that. So be genuine, be true to yourself. Uh, how about this next one? I may, I may defer on words here, but Doug's second quality, because if you're being yourself, right, if you're being genuine, what else happens? You're flawed. Your flaws are going to show. You cannot show up being yourself and being genuine every day without revealing some of your flaws. I love, love this quote. It sums up my, my exact thoughts on what being flawed really means. And that um, it comes from Tony Geisler. Being imperfect is blissfully expansive. If I had it all figured out, growth wouldn't be necessary. And to me, growth is joyful, even when it's uncomfortable. Did I get a yes? Yes. Amen. So we're all flawed. And really and truly, just knowing that, as we all do, can we all agree that we're all flawed? Yeah. Just knowing that should be the reminder that it's okay to have those flaws 
And it's also not that you have them that's important, it's what you're going to do with them that's important. Okay? Letting those struggles become a part of your journey. Growing from those flaws. Learning when being brutally honest is just being mean. <laughs> or maybe how to change the words just a little bit so it's received a little bit better. Am I right? So we're all flawed. Don't be afraid of that. Also, being flawed, okay, I just asked you to do something scary, right? I asked you to share that you're not perfect. This is a scary thing for many people, myself included, because I was a perfectionist for a very long time. So, our third thing that all top coaches are is confident. For years, my downline, my crossline, my upline has been asking me to do a training on confidence because if there's one word pretty much anybody who knows me will use to describe me, it's confident. To which I say, sorry bitches, I was born this way. I don't know what to tell you. I can't train somebody on that. Come on, I know it's Sunday, but seriously. No, no, really. Confidence, I think, um, I have a, uh, to thank my mom for that. She raised me. She was a fearless feminist herself, despite being a stay at home mom. And she taught me from a very young age that it didn't matter that I was a girl. Girls can do anything they want, and they can do it just as good as anyone else. So I can thank my mom for that. But if you weren't raised that way, I think what I've been able to nail confidence down to is belief in what we do regardless of our own success in it or lack thereof. I'm going to use Jamie again. She's not waiting to get to her goal weight to coach. Why? Because she knows someone else has lost 100 pounds with Beachbody. Right? Why can't she? And sometimes we just have to fake that confidence until we have it. I have a personally sponsored coach who <laughs> is one of my best friends and <clears throat> was a discount coach for about six months before she came to me and said, I'm in a really dark place emotionally. She had just had her second or third baby. She wasn't comfortable in the skin she was in. And financially, they were in a really rocky place. So she decided to take that discount coaching opportunity and turn it into a real coaching opportunity. Because she had a strong why, trying to avoid bankruptcy and losing her home and all the wonderful things that come along with financial struggle, she worked hard. She was already working hard, leaving her kiddos at home all day to be a teacher. All my teachers out there, can we give them a round of applause? Overworked, underpaid, and especially if you're like my coach who teaches English literature Ooh. because they have to grade papers every single night and weekend. Not to mention that she also had a master's degree in English literature, so she taught as a college professor. To say that she worked hard to begin with is an understatement. Now we were adding to her plate. She was getting up early in the morning to add workouts when she hadn't slept enough, not enough the night before. She was getting in a power hour, and then she stayed up late at the end of the day to follow up with all of those challengers and all of those customers. Her husband and her were like ships sailing and passing in the night because he was working as well. He would come home from work. She would leave to go teach college classes. She would come home. He would go to sleep. She would work, and the cycle repeated. Probably about a year into this, she, it was the spring, and she was just having that moment. I can't, I can't do, I can't do it all anymore. I can't do it all. This is stressing me out. Yes, we're filling that financial gap, but something's gonna give. <laughs> and it's probably gonna be my mental sanity, right? Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Tell your husband that next semester, which would be the fall semester, she was off for the summer. I said, fall semester, you're not gonna go back and be a professor. Not forever, one semester. Get him to agree to one semester of you putting in the countless hours you're putting in as a college professor. Put those same hours into your beach body business. Let's see what happens. Are you willing to do this? Now, was I confident that this was gonna like work magically? Was I confident? Not entirely, but I acted like it to her because 
Other people had done it. I thought she was wonderful. Why couldn't she do it? Yes or yes. I never had to leave a job because I didn't have one to begin with. I never had that stress. But I was confident. I was confident in her abilities to fight for her babies, to work hard for what she wanted. And I was confident in the company she was partnered with. So she did it. And in just three months of putting the same amount of hours into her beach body business that she was putting in as a college English professor, she was earning more in one week with her beach body coaching business than she was in an entire semester. I heard it, say it. Wow. Needless to say, she didn't ever go back <laughs> to teaching college English. She has a thriving business, a fourth baby, and um, a wonderful thriving team of her own. So that confidence, if, I, if there's anyone here that struggles with it, here's, here's the one thing I can tell you. Fake it till you make it, and it doesn't have to happen to you for you to be confident in what you're doing. How many people stood up today when Danielle asked if you've ever lost even a pound in Beachbody? I would say what, probably 99% of the room, Danielle? And had we asked if you know somebody that has lost weight with Team Beachbody, I think everybody would have stood. Now you've met several people that also have financial success. Yes or yes? So can we all be a little bit more confident in what we're doing today? Yes. yes. All right, so next up, you also have to be creative. I get to throw it back to my coach, Melissa, when I thought about well, what, what does creativity look like in Beachbody? We all know that we have to do the four vital behaviors. There's not really anything creative specifically about those four things. We just have to do them. But how you do them is where the creativity comes in. Melissa was told by one of her mentors early on years ago before Instagram was the it thing, you need to build an Instagram account. Much like myself, when someone who was successful told her what to do, she said, okay, without asking a whole lot of questions. So when she said build an Instagram, I said, well, why? She goes, I don't know, Shalene told me to. <laughs> okay, we're gonna build Instagram. <laughs> Melissa got super creative. If you're not following Melissa Maid on Instagram, first you cray, and second of all, you should. And the reason that her Instagram account went from nothing organically to one quarter of a million followers is because she was creative and she did something nobody else on Instagram was doing at the time. She has a background in being a fitness professional. And she thought, well, what if I, and you know those cool like side-by-side -side pictures, what if one was a video? And then she could teach core exercises, because everybody loved her for her abs, right? She could teach those core exercises and demonstrate them fully while in a split screen be explaining the move while making that personal connection with her Instagram audience, she could look them in the eye and just sit there and talk like a girlfriend or a fitness instructor would to someone they were teaching. Caught on like wildfire, needless to say, and here she is, most well known everywhere she goes, not for her success in coaching, but for her Instagram account. Because she used creativity. Yes or yes? Yes. 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 We can all be a little creative. Next up is fun. Number five, if you're counting. Not every day in Team Beachbody is fun. It's just not. Right, Jackie? <laughs> Some days, the four vital behaviors seem a little doldrum. Well, guess what? Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> right? Sometimes marriage is boring. Sometimes your day job is boring. Sometimes raising kids is boring. Okay, not everything can be fun all the time. but. If you find a way to take the things you have to do and make them fun, it becomes a whole lot more bearable. So, Joe, plug your ears. I don't like running challenge groups all that much. I think they're boring. Sorry, I said it. <laughs> it's okay. It's just not my favorite part of the business. It's just not. But I have to do them, right? Because it's kind of like a core thing of what we do. So I've had to find a way to like them. One of the fun things that I'm doing coming up, cover the kids' ears, it's a best fucking bitches challenge. It's called our BFB challenge. And it's gonna encourage, I'm doing it with my girlfriend, um, the, the English professor girl. Um, she is one of my BFBs. 
And we're going to work together. We wanted to bring in other women who could bring in a sister, a friend, um, a cousin, a co-worker, and not only work on how to improve our eating and our fitness, but also having healthier friendships, teaching them what accountability really looks like, teaching them what having even one supportive friend on your side can do for your goals in life, okay? And that's fun, right? When you can make it your own, it's fun. It may not be your thing, but it's fun. Could you have a little bit more fun with your business, right? Maybe you hate recruiting. Could you make it a bingo game? I don't know. Put on better music while you're, while you're doing it. Whatever it is, whatever it looks like for you, find that fun. And then make sure it translates to your social media. Yes or yes? Yes. 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 Because we all know that person that's sitting inside of the beach body box and the only thing they ever post about every morning is their shake, every afternoon is their, is their workout, some sweaty selfie, and every single night is talking about the workout that they're gonna eat or do the next day or what they ate for dinner. It's a little bit boring if that's every single day, yes or yes. Yes. So could you do something fun that's like not just that? That's genuine to you? That's a little bit creative? Yes or yes, we're getting there, we're getting there. You're getting me. Oh, I was gonna mention Hotter at Home as well, Aubrey. I <laughs> have another coach that got a little creative. She has another passion. Let's <laughs> need to ask her about that group, Hotter at Home. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, conversations, that's right. Number six, we're almost there, hang with me. All of this, everything that I've already said, one through five, has to be done with number six, which is consistency, right? It's not always easy, it's not always fun, and we don't always want to do it. Jamie, unfortunately, we have something very in common. In 2013, it was probably the hardest year of my life for multiple reasons, one of which was that on the 4th of July, my sister called me and said, are you at home? Yes. Is Bill with you? That's my husband. Yes. Where are the kids? With my monster in law. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I blocked her on Facebook. She won't ever see this. With my monster in law. Okay. Can you and Bill go to the bedroom? Okay. So I know something's coming. For most, well, really, I'm, I'm the youngest of, of three in my family. and. From the time I was born on forward, my mom was morbidly obese. So I grew up my entire life expecting that phone call every time my phone rings and it's my sister. I answer and when she, hi, I'm like, well, thank God it's not the call. Obviously this was the call. Dad has stage four lung cancer. He's already been told to get his affairs in order. He's not gonna do chemo. Can you be home on Monday for his first doctor's appointment? In that moment, I knew my world was about to change because in my adult life, my dad had become my best friend. He had, was an entrepreneur himself, had built a successful business, and had then sold that business and was enjoying retirement. He was healthy. He uh, exercised daily with his in cowboy boots because, really, <laughs> how else would a farmer from Minnesota exercise but in cowboy boots? He even tried insanity. He got through three minutes of it in his cowboy boots before deciding that it was crazy and not for him. <laughs> he was 72 years old and he said, you know, all of my friends are sick with something. Diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. He goes, I don't have any of that but I got the biggie. There was nothing they could do. We sat in that first doctor's appointment, they said, okay, we're gonna put the scan up and everywhere that it's glowing bright, except for your brain and your balls, that those just glow brightly anyways. <laughs> All the rest of it, if it's glowing brightly, that, that means there's cancer there. They put it on the screen, it was everywhere. So, for the next, uh, they said, you know, you've got anywhere from three months to six months. We've all heard these cancer stories, right? We don't, they don't really know if they're doing their best guess. He decided, you know what, I just want to live it up these last months and make me feel as good as you can until you can't. 
That's what we're gonna do. Okay. So, I live here. My family all lives in Minnesota. We're a really inconvenient place in Minnesota, nonetheless. And for the next five months, let's see, in 2012, I had hit elite for the first time. My team was 2012 elite. That meant for 2013, I was getting a $500 bonus every month. And for the next five months, my sister called me randomly and said, there's something going on with dad, can you be here tomorrow? And every single time, I would have to look at my husband and go, how are we gonna do this? You know, at that point I had three kids, he was still working, and I, I you know, it, we were flying all the time, he was sick. And uh, every time, without fail, my husband would check our bank account and say, it's good, your bonus just showed up. Book the flight. And for those last five bucks, I was there for everything. Every doctor's appointment, every goodbye party, that really was a party because my dad knew how to do that. Every family gathering, every last conversation he wanted to have with me, my boys. I was there for all of it. It's because I was consistent for four years leading up to that, because I couldn't have predicted my dad was going to be sick. I knew I wanted to build that business in the beginning for my boys. Then when my dad got sick, I was thankful I had built the business, because it was allowing me to be there for him. And then in those times when I was traveling and I didn't want to work, and I didn't really didn't want to run challenge groups when I felt like crap myself, I knew that it was because I had built this business that I was able to do it, so I better still be building it, even when I don't feel like it, because my dad's dying. So I did. I didn't work as hard, but I still worked, and I still hit success club every month, because you know what? Helping other people helped me get outside of my head and my own pain in those months, in those struggles, because I had built a team of women who had my back as much as I had theirs. I could help my challengers and say, thank you for being a loyal customer to me, but my girls are gonna take care of you. I'm not running any challenge groups right now, but I've got good coaches who can do it for me. And we band together. And in November of 2013, when he passed, I still had a business to take care of me. I never once had to call a boss and ask if I could go to be with my father during any of his struggles, never had to do that. Never had to answer to anybody. And it was because of what this business had provided me. And I knew when it was hard that I had to keep going because I didn't know when the next person was gonna be sick or need my help. Yes or yes? Yes. So because I was consistent, I was able to stick with this business. This one's a little bit of a longer quote, but it, it applies to fitness and and this business. I'm in the 80 day obsession test group with Autumn and it's been a lot of up and downs in this test group and they're still working on a lot of kinks and Autumn's been able to kind of converse with us as she's filming um, because she's hearing us in the group and then the next day when she films she'll address what we're saying. So this first part about the nutrition, you're still on your fitness journey, this is for you. The second part I added because it so well applies to our businesses as well. Autumn says, Small hinges swing big doors. A little less salt can make big changes. A little more sleep can make big changes. A little more water can make big changes. This applies to your business too. A few more invites can make big changes. Adding a few more coaches to your team can make big changes. A few more testimonials can make big changes. You are responsible for all the changes in your physical life and your business. Which way have you hung your hinges to sway? To open new doors, exciting opportunities, and changes? Or to slam the door shut, hiding in your comfort zone, playing a victim to your life circumstances? It's up to you. Your last one, number seven, Daniels, thank God, because I am making your show run late, I apologize. <laughs> number seven is what you all have been with me today, that is patient. I fast forwarded, I said I started here and now I'm here. But there were eight years in between, guys, and they weren't all great. 
Some years were amazing. Three years with my team hit a lead. One year we sucked it and hit premiere. Just kidding, we didn't suck it. That's still pretty great. But you know, <laughs> right? We've had good years, we've had bad years. We've had comebacks, we've had breaks, <laughs> right? But we've been patient through it all because we've been, uh, we've been consistent. If it's important to you, it's worth sticking around, right? <laughs> whether it's marriage, whether it's your nutrition and your, and your physical journey, whether it's this business. If it is important to you, you don't quit when it gets hard. You keep going. You find ways to make it fun. You keep showing up as you. You take confidence in the success of the people around you and the company you partnered with, right? Use a little patience, it will serve you well. I'm gonna end today. I've had only quotes from women today, and there's a reason for that, but today I'm gonna end with Jim Carrey. <laughs> yeah. The decisions we make in this moment are based in either love or fear. Many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect. So we never ask the universe to give it to us. But if you can fail at what you don't want, you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. And I think that I know that you came here today sacrificing your Sunday afternoon with your families, with your friends, spending time enjoying this wonderful fall weather we have here in Texas, <laughs> and you came here. There's a million places you could be. I know you want this. There's a reason you're here. So why not take those seven qualities of top coaches and realize that those qualities lie in each and every one of you? You don't have to be a top coach. That's not the only definition of success in this business. You decide what that is. But if you want it, if there's even a little part of you that has butterflies right now, you're in the right place. Soak it in and get to work. Thank you.